Hi, my name is Allison Wade. Today I will take a few minutes to explain the five rights of medication administration and discuss common reasons for medication errors in the pediatric patient population. This is taught in the Nursing 330 course titled Law and Ethics for Healthcare Professionals in the University of Mount Olive's RN to BSN degree program. This video is an assignment for my Master of Science in Nursing degree program at the University of Mount Olive. I have one goal and three objectives for this brief lecture and they include the following. The goal of this video is for students to understand the five rights of medication administration and to be able to list three reasons why medication administration errors occur more often in the pediatric patient population than in other patient populations. As nurses, we are morally obligated and professionally accountable to administer medication safely to our patients. Medication errors are defined as failure in the process of administering a medication that can lead to or has the potential to harm patients. Studies show that pediatric patients are exposed to three times more medication errors than adults. The most frequent medication errors that are seen in the pediatric patient population are related to dosing. Many factors such as a child's age, weight, and body surface area play a role in the appropriate medication dosing of pediatric patients. The five rights of medication administration include the right patient, the right medication, the right dose, the right time, and the right route. Common reasons that medication errors occur include incorrect dosing. An example of this would be if an accurate patient weight is not used. Frequent interruptions. Nurses may get pulled away from a task due to an emergency. This disrupts the process of medication administration. Compliance with medication policy and practice guidelines. Guardrail settings on IV pumps may need to be updated or some IV pumps may not be able to calculate weight-based IV medication administration dosing correctly. The work environment. Pediatric patients can be upset. There may be multiple children in one room who are loud and crying. Emotions can run high. Parents may be asking multiple questions. And there is a lot going on that can distract nurses while administering medications. Supply shortages include having a medication that's routinely given, but now stocked by the pharmacy in a different concentration. During the coronavirus pandemic, this was common with medications such as children's Tylenol, Motrin, and breathing treatments. Now, I will show an example of ensuring that the five rights of medication administration are adhered to when administering children's Tylenol to a seven-year-old patient being evaluated in the emergency department after falling off her bike and scraping her right elbow. Hi Zoe, my name is Allie and I will be the nurse helping take care of you today while you're in the emergency department. I understand that you were riding your bike earlier today and you fell off and landed on your right arm. Is that correct? Yes. I'm sorry that that happened. I have some Tylenol that the doctor has ordered for you to help with your pain. Would you please tell me your first and last name? Zoe Hughes. Thank you. When is your birthday? Please tell me the month, the day, and the year. July the 16th, 2015. Great, thank you. Your mom also verified that the information you gave me is correct. Now that you've told me your name and date of birth, this is the Tylenol that the doctor has ordered. It contains 160 milligrams per ml. According to the physician's order, based on your weight, the dose will be 320 milligrams or 10 mLs. The medication is ordered to be given as STAT and has been verified by the pharmacy. This medication will be given by mouth We have the 320 milligrams or 10 mLs. Zoe, you can go ahead and take the medicine. 
It's great flavored and it should taste good. Great job. This brief lecture should help you understand the five rights to medication administration and common errors that are made when nurses administer medications to pediatric patients. It is essential when administering medications of any kind to verify that you have the right patient, the right medication, the right dose, the right time, and the right route. Common errors made when administering medication to pediatric patients are due to incorrect dosage calculations, frequent interruptions, compliance with medication policy and practice guidelines, staffing shortages, and supply shortages. This information is supported by current evidence found in the literature on which I have referenced. Please take the time to fill out the survey with the link that I have listed below and email it to my professor, Dr. Joy Keeper, within three days. Thank you for your time and attention and best of luck in your future nursing endeavors.